Today could be a crucial step towards restoring stability in Haiti. Ariel Henry has resigned as prime minister, paving the way for new leadership. Henry presented his resignation today in a letter from Los Angeles. His exit comes the same day a council tasked with choosing his replacement was sworn in. Haiti has struggled with a power vacuum since February when gangs launched a series of coordinated attacks while Henri was on an official visit to Kenya. More than 2,500 Haitians have been killed or injured in the first three months of this year. Let's go live to Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, and check in with Etienne Cote Paulouk. He's the editor in chief of Haiti Weekly. Etienne, thanks so much for uh, jumping on with us. Can you tell us about how this transition of power is supposed to work? Hi, Jacqueline. Uh, yes, it's supposed to take office today and name a new prime minister that was there this morning. He did a speech. Uh, his name is Patrick Boivard. He was the uh, minister of finance for the, from the, the last government. And uh, this morning, so they all sworn in. They were all sworn in in a secret ceremony at the presidential palace. Nobody knew about it. But then afterward, there was the, the most more of uh, public open, let's say guest, uh, there was a ceremony for guests afterward that were, was organized at the prime minister's office uh, where all the journalists were and the other uh, Canadian uh, embassy, uh, embassy ambassadors. I was talking to the Canadian ambassador there. He told me that this brings uh, a lot of hopes because uh, we see in this that, that there's a uh, national union um, uh, government, which is something difficult to achieve here and most, probably most of the uh, different countries in the world. Uh, so now uh, they're going to name uh, ministers for all the cab cabinets of the government and they'll try to attack their, their first task, the main task that the people are waiting and the, everybody's waiting for is security. Security. Okay. Um, how are Haitians reacting with this situation that they've been dealing with, the lack of security, and then the, um, you know, sort of turmoil in terms of the political side of things as well? Yes, like I said, everybody's waiting for more security in the, the, the city, but also nobody's duped and, and they know that this can derail. We know how politicians are in Haiti, especially. Uh, people don't trust the politicians. This is most of them old politicians that are together to try to do this. Everybody hopes for the best, but nobody knows exactly if it's going to be the best. Uh, this morning, after the secret ceremony at the presidential palace, there was shootings again uh, at the Shan Mas. Uh, so we don't know if, it gonna, if, if it's going to have a sustainable impact. But everybody is trying to find a solution for the crisis right now. It's been more than uh, more than a month and a half now that every all schools are closed, uh, all offices are closed in Port-au-Prince, and the, most of the main downtown areas are controlled by armed groups. So everybody stays home. Everybody is uh, waiting to see what's going to happen. They are afraid to take the streets, and and they want to work because most of the population around Haiti and Port-au-Prince too uh, live on their their daily income every day they make the money that they can that they can use by night to feed their family so they're all waiting for the economic uh, the, the economy to get back on its feet and go back to work again okay we'll see if this is uh, one piece in the puzzle there Etienne uh, thank you so much for the latest that's Etienne Cote Palouk he's the editor-in-chief of Haiti Weekly and he is in Port-au-Prince